Well, hello and welcome to this English lesson about healthcare and medicine. In this English lesson, I'll talk about all of the words and phrases you need to know to visit the doctor, to go to the hospital, even to just have a conversation about your health, how you're feeling, if you're feeling ill or sick or maybe you've hurt yourself somehow. Uh in this lesson, we'll talk about some of the things you need to know in order to be able to talk about that. I'm Bob the Canadian. I do these lessons every Friday. It's so good to be here to do this English lesson about healthcare and medicine. Before we get started, I did wanna say a couple of things. One, there is a study pack for this lesson. Yes, I'm probably gonna mention this every Friday. It's at bobthecanadian.com. There's also a link in the description below if you want to go have a look. There's crossword puzzles and all the slides and matching worksheets and all kinds of support materials that you can use to help yourself remember all of these words and phrases. A doctor. So, the main person that you want to see if you're not feeling well or if you've hurt yourself would be the doctor. Uh the doctor is the person who went to school I think for seven years or more to learn about the human body. To learn about diseases and illness and what to do if you break a bone. A doctor is a very, very smart person. I think if you become a doctor, you have to memorize a lot of things um because you need to be able to talk to people and figure out what's wrong with them. You might also when you visit see a nurse. So, a nurse is someone who has gone to school not quite as long as a doctor but is still very much a healthcare professional. A nurse is probably going to be the first person you see if you make a doctor's appointment. I don't know if you knew that. When I go to the doctor, I make an appointment and then I go and they call me in to the doctor's office and usually a nurse comes in first. She takes my blood pressure. She takes my temperature usually with a little thermometer she puts in my ear. And she records a whole bunch of those things. Usually, I have to step on a scale and then she usually asks me or he usually asks me what is wrong and they'll make some notes and then after a little while, the doctor will come. So, the nurse is someone who once again is someone who has been trained to take care of people who have health concerns to figure out if they are sick to figure out if they're feeling pain somewhere where the pain is coming from and they work with a doctor in order to help you figure out what you need to do to feel better. A surgeon is a special kind of doctor. A surgeon is a doctor who does surgery. So, if you are someone maybe you have pain in your stomach. Maybe like me, you have heart problems and they need to actually do surgery. A surgeon will then There's no other nice way to say this. They will open you up and they will fix you inside and then they will sew you back up again. I'm making this uh motion here but when I had heart surgery, they actually went in through the side. I still have a scar right here. They went in through the side to fix my heart. So, a surgeon is a special kind of doctor probably with more years of training. For sure with more years of training. Who is able to do surgery and we also say able to operate and then we have what's called a specialist. Once one of our kids was jumping on the trampoline and they and uh, she broke a bone in her leg and when we went to get x-rays, the doctor couldn't see a fracture. So, he sent us to a specialist. When we went to the specialist, she could see on the x-ray a really minor break in her leg bone. So, a specialist is someone who does more training for a specific kind of illness or injury. So, let's say you have a sore back. You might be sent to a specialist. Your family doctor, your regular doctor, what we also call a general practitioner might say, hey, I understand your back is sore but I think I need to send you to a specialist for further uh, consultation. So, you might get sent to someone who knows more than your regular doctor, someone called a specialist. A paramedic is someone with medical training who goes to the place where the injured person is or the person who is sick, usually in an ambulance uh, to pick them up. 
So, a paramedic knows first aid. A paramedic knows how to diagnose and treat you immediately at least enough to get you to a hospital, okay? So, if you're in a car accident, the paramedics will show up and they will help you into the ambulance and bring you to a hospital. So, a paramedic like a doctor and nurse has special training to figure out what's wrong and what you need and then they will quickly get you to a hospital to see nurses and doctors. And like I mentioned, they usually come in an ambulance or they come in an air ambulance. So, an ambulance is a vehicle specially designed to pick people up if they are having some sort of health problems or if they have been injured. When I used to work on a construction site, um one day someone fell and injured themselves and we had to call the ambulance. In my country, you dial 911 on your phone. I know the numbers are different in other countries but we had to call 911 and an ambulance came to pick up the man who had fallen. So, the ambulance came. It had its siren on and they put the man uh, on a gurney and they put them in the ambulance and the paramedics drove away with him. Once a number of years ago, there was a really bad car accident down my road and we noticed that the air ambulance had landed there. An air ambulance is a helicopter that is designed to do the same job as a normal ambulance. So, both an air ambulance and an ambulance have all the right equipment in the back to take care of people uh, as well as the right people to take care of you. When the air ambulance comes though, it usually means it is a very, very bad accident. Medical center or clinic. So, when you go for a doctor's appointment, sometimes you go to the hospital but sometimes you go to a medical center or to a clinic. So, in Canada at least, if you are sick and it's not really severe, it's not really bad, you would probably just go to the medical center. So, let's say I had a stuffed up nose and a fever for three days in a row. I wouldn't go to the hospital. Sorry, I'm clicking too many slides here. I would instead go to a medical center. There are hospitals in all of our major cities but there are medical centers in most towns and cities and in the city, there's more than one medical center. So, usually it's easier to see a doctor if you have minor health problems at a medical center. And then if you go, you'll end up sitting in a waiting room. A waiting room is a large room with lots of chairs. If you have gone to see the doctor and if it's not an emergency, you will probably have to sit in the waiting room. Sometimes you wait a long time in a waiting room. It's not always fun to go to a waiting room to wait but eventually they will call your name and then you will go in to see the doctor or nurse. Doctor's office. So, when you go to visit the doctor, you will eventually uh, be in the doctor's office and the doctor's office is an office but it's also a room where there's usually a bed and there's um heart rate monitor and a stethoscope and all of the things the doctor needs to look in your ears and up your nose and whatever the doctor needs to do but you will definitely be um eventually you'll be in the waiting room and they'll say, okay, the doctor will see you now and you will go to the doctor's office in which case you will probably see the nurse first and then the doctor in Canada. A hospital. So, a hospital is a large building usually in a big city where they take care of people. At a hospital, you can go to a hospital to have a baby. You can go to a hospital if your arm is broken to get a cast. You can go to a hospital for heart surgery. You can go to a hospital for many things. All of the things that might be happening to you. Maybe you have cancer and you need to go for cancer treatment. You would go to a hospital for that. So, a hospital is a place where doctors and nurses and surgeons work and it's a place where you go if you need healthcare. And if something happens, let's say you hurt yourself but someone can still bring you to the hospital. So, let's say on the farm, uh, I twisted my ankle really badly. Um, 
Jen would bring me to the emergency room. We wouldn't call an ambulance. If you're in a lot of pain but not too much pain and if you're not in any immediate danger, usually you will go to the hospital and you will go to the emergency room. So, that's probably a good example. I once broke my toe. <laughs> um I I hit my toe and my little toe broke and then Jen took me to the emergency room uh and the doctor fixed it for me. Here's how the doctor fixed my toe. <laughs> she said, um so, I'm going to have to put your toe straight again. In order to do that, I'm going to have to pull your toe and move it over and I'm gonna do that on the count of three and then before she even started counting, she did it and then my toe was straight and they taped my toe to my other toe and I had to keep it that way for a few weeks. So, the doctor tricked me but I I think it was a good trick. Symptoms. When you are not feeling well, you have symptoms. When you have a cold, your nose is stuffed up. When you have a fl- the flu, you might have a sore throat. You might have a fever where you're feeling very, very hot. You might just feel really tired. So, when you have symptoms, it can help the doctor or nurse figure out what's wrong with you. You'll sit down and they'll say, so, how are you feeling? What are the symptoms? Oh, I have a stuffed up nose and my ear hurts and then they can use that to diagnose what is wrong. So, a diagnosis is when the doctor or nurse looks at your symptoms and uses those symptoms to figure out what is wrong. So, a simple one would be um arm hurts and uh is not straight anymore. Symptom or diagnosis broken arm. (laughs) Sorry, that was a bad example but if you were to go and say my symptoms are fever, sore throat, um difficulty breathing, they might diagnose you. The diagnosis might be that you have COVID, right? So, we all are familiar with those symptoms now and then they will recommend treatment. So, treatment might be to take antibiotics, to take medicine. Treatment might be that they give you a needle and you're good to go. So, once they know the symptoms and then once they have a diagnosis, then they will decide on what the treatment will be. What they will do or what you'll need to do in order to feel better. Usually, they just write you a prescription, send you to the pharmacy and you get some uh, pills depending on what's wrong with you but they decide on a course of treatment. We're all familiar I think with what infection is. This is when something gets into your body that isn't supposed to be there. It's usually a bacteria. So, you might have a bacterial infection. If you cut yourself, I actually cut myself the other day. It's very minor. I don't know if you can see that um but I made sure that I washed my hands and I put some special cream there because I don't wanna get an infection. So, an infection is when some other organism, usually bacteria, gets into your body and starts to multiply and then usually you end up with a fever at some point and then they will give you antibiotics. So, if my finger got infected, they would say, what are your symptoms? And I would say, well, I cut my finger and now it's really big and red and they might say, well, the diagnosis is that you have an infection. The treatment is that you will need to take antibiotics. By the way, we would call these capsules. You can call them pills um but as opposed to tablets. These are not tablets. These are capsules. Um so, an antibiotic is something that will kill the bacteria that is in your body. So, that is generally what they will prescribe if you have an infection. The doctor or nurse might come in with a stethoscope. This is a special tool they put in your in their ears, not your ears. They put in their ears and then they can listen to your heart rate. Sometimes the doctor or nurse will look at their watch and they'll see what your heart rate is or they'll listen to see if your heart rate if you have an irregular heartbeat. So, normally your heart goes like da-dun, da-dun, da-dun but maybe yours skips a beat or maybe it goes slow and fast, slow and fast or maybe you have an elevated heart rate where your heart rate is higher than normal. My heart rate right now is 94. That's pretty high for right now. Normally, when I'm sitting, it's around 65 or 70. I have a very healthy heart rate but I think I'm excited to do this lesson. Stethoscope. I should say it a few more times. Stethoscope. Try to say that word. It is a challenge even for English speakers. There's also something called blood pressure. 
So, I normally have average or below average blood pressure. I have never had high blood pressure. Blood pressure is a measure of the pressure of your blood inside of your veins and arteries. I think veins and arteries. This isn't a medical lesson by a medical professional but so, take it with a grain of salt. Um they will put a blood pressure cuff on your arm and then they will take your blood pressure either with a machine or sometimes the doctor will do it with their stethoscope and their watch. They'll actually take your blood pressure as well or not their watch. They have like a dial, a pressure gauge I think. So, blood pressure. When I was in the hospital, they uh took my temperature and my blood pressure and blood sugar levels. They all regularly. Um thermometer. So, a thermometer is a device that measures the temperature of your body. If the temperature of your body is above, I don't know, 36 to 38 degrees is probably normal. Uh, I should probably look that up. Normal body temp in Celsius. Here we go. 37 Celsius. So, between 36 and 37.2. So, what happens is if your body temperature, if you take this thermometer and put it under your armpit or under your tongue, um we have one too that we can use to check our kids temperatures in their ear. Uh it will tell you uh your body temperature. If it's 39 or 40, it, you're you have a fever and that is not a good situation. An x-ray. So, sometimes you've hurt yourself inside your body. Maybe a bone is broken. Maybe you hurt your finger. Or like me, maybe you hurt your little toe. I I'm pointing to this. This is my pinky finger. My toe is on my foot. Sorry if I'm confusing you. Um they might need to take an x-ray. So, you will go and they will uh put you in a room and push a button and then they'll see the bones inside of your body. So, an x-ray machine shoots x-rays through your body uh and it can go through the tissue but it can't go through the bones. That's probably how it works. I shouldn't try to describe exactly how these machines work. Anyways, if you have a maybe you think you broke your leg or you think you broke your arm, you will most likely get an x-ray and then they will see what is wrong with you. Where you have hurt yourself. An ultrasound. So, this is similar to an x-ray except it uses sound instead of rays to look inside the body. This is most commonly used for two things. One, if someone is expecting a baby, you will often go for a few ultrasounds and they will use the ultrasound wand to see the baby in the womb, okay? So, when Jen was pregnant, we would go for one or two ultrasounds during the pregnancy and they would say, yep, everything looks good and then we would be happy. You can even see the heart beating on an ultrasound. The other major use of ultrasound is for seeing internal organs. The heart, sometimes the stomach area. The heart, they can use an ultrasound to see the valves in the heart and to make sure that they are working properly. And it works by sending sound waves into the body. It's different than x-rays but still the same idea. Um something used to get a little bit of a glimpse of what what is happening in the body. Weight and height. This is a pretty common one too when you go to the doctor. No matter what's wrong with me, if I go to the doctor, they wanna know my weight and they wanna know my height. Usually, the nurse will take these measurements. Uh the nurse will say, hey, before the doctor sees you, uh step onto the scale and uh he or she will record my weight and then they'll check my height. It's usually the same machine. When you're on the scale, there's also a little thing that they can use to check your height. They just want to see um how you're doing. Um and then sometimes my doctor says, the graph for your weight keeps going up. You need to make it go down. My doctor is always concerned about my weight. Number one concern. So, a few slides here. We have vaccination, needle syringe and injection. So, a vaccination is a special kind of injection where they put something into you that helps your body build immunity to something. Many of us got vaccinations during COVID to build up our immunity to COVID. So, I think we're pretty familiar with vaccination. Um 
they use a needle or syringe. Technically, the needle is the sharp point on the end and the syringe is the bottom part but we kind of use these words interchangeably like the doctor filled a syringe and then gave me an injection or the doctor filled a needle and gave me an injection. All of those will work. And then injection I've used a few times. This is when they I don't like talking about this when they put the needle in to your arm or maybe in your uh the one of the cheeks of your butt uh or maybe into the muscle on the leg. There are different places where they put injections. Usually, it's the shoulder uh where the injection goes but um never a fun time. I always look away. If I ever get an injection, I look away. I can't watch while I get an injection. I feel like maybe I would faint if I did that. Blood test. Sometimes the doctor or nurse wants to know what's in your blood. They can tell a lot about what's wrong by looking at your blood and you might need a blood test. In order to do this, they put a a rubber band around your arm. You can see that my vein, see my vein there? They put a rubber band around your arm and then they put a needle into your vein and they take out blood, send it to a lab. It gets tested and they can figure out what's wrong with you. So, I used a few phrases there. You go for blood work. I used that phrase earlier. It's a blood test. They take blood. Uh you might say, oh, I have to go uh I have to go to the clinic because they need to take blood for a blood test. Vitals or vital signs. You'll hear this quite often if you watch a TV show that takes place in a hospital. Vitals include all of the things they can measure. Your heart rate, your temperature, the amount of oxygen in your blood. They hook you up to little machines like this one and this machine can kind of keep track of all of the things that they can measure easily. Again, temperature, heart rate, um blood oxygen level. Those are probably the biggest ones. They even have ones that check your blood pressure every 10 or 15 minutes. They'll put a blood pressure cuff on your arm and then every 10 minutes it will all of a sudden squeeze your arm and the machine will take your blood pressure. So, that is what we call vitals or vital signs. Intravenous. Sometimes they need to put something into your bloodstream directly. Not an injection. They need to put like maybe saline or some other kind of medicine into you Um, and then they will put a needle in your arm or somewhere else, maybe your hand and they will hang a bag up and it will drip and whatever's in the bag will slowly go into your bloodstream. So, there were a few times where I had an IV hooked up to me. So, We don't always say intravenous. We just say IV Uh, and on a hospital TV show, you might hear them say, you know, let's get an IV going uh, which means they're going to hook that up to you. Bandage. I probably should have put a bandage on this finger this morning. Are you tired of looking at that? Oh, it won't focus. Oh, my camera has decided not to focus anymore. I don't know why it does that sometimes. Sometimes my camera just gets a little bit lazy and decides not to focus but oh well. A bandage is a little piece of fabric that's sticky that you can put over a small cut or wound or sore that you have on your body. And then if you break something, they will most likely put on a cast. So, a cast is made out of plaster. It's very, very durable. Um I think they're still made out of plaster. I haven't had a cast for a very long time. I had a cast once when I was a kid but I have not had one since then and what it does is it holds the bone straight while it heals. It prevents you from you know putting pressure onto that bone. It keeps it isolated. It keeps it immobile while it is healing and usually you can choose the color now. Um one of my kids had a cast eight or nine years ago and uh she was able to choose the color of her cast. I think she chose purple. Can't remember. Maybe pink. Stitches. So, if you need stitches, like this is a pretty small wound. This is a pretty small cut. I didn't need stitches but if you have a large cut, sometimes they need to use a needle and thread to close the wound, to close the cut. So, this person, it looks like they had a pretty serious cut on their hand and so, they needed stitches. So, they went to the hospital 
and either the doctor or nurse put stitches in to close the wound so that it can heal. Crutches. Uh, I've been on crutches once in my life. Uh, when I was a kid, I sprained my ankle while playing baseball. Actually, twice. I sprained my ankle once when a cow fell on my leg. <laughs> because <laughs> uh, we grew up on a farm and then once playing baseball. This is uh two things that you use so that it's easier to walk when you have uh, a leg, knee or ankle or foot injury. Um if you break a leg, you will probably be on crutches. You might use a wheelchair for a bit but you will be on crutches. That's how we say it. Oh, he's on crutches right now. He twisted his ankle. Um you can also use a cane which is just a single pole. But it's more common if you have an injury to be on crutches for a week or two while your ankle or foot or knee or leg heals. When you go to see the doctor, um it doesn't mean you're going to stay at the hospital. When you go to the emergency room, it doesn't mean you're going to stay overnight at the hospital. But if it's serious enough, you might be admitted. So, I went to the hospital once many years ago and I was admitted. I had a really high fever and I had a blood infection. So, instead of going home, they admitted me to the hospital. That means they found me a bed. They put me in a room. They put me on an IV. They put antibiotics in the intravenous into the IV bag um, and I stayed for a few days until I was all better. And they put me in a hospital bed. Now, this is definitely different than a normal bed. A hospital bed can go up It can go down. It has wheels so they can bring you to different places. Um and honestly, they're not very comfortable, I would say. That's maybe they they're not comfortable because they want you to get better quickly and go home. Hospital room. So, the room you stay in at a hospital is simply called a hospital room and there are a few different kinds. You can be in a ward which means you're in a room with other people. Or you can be in a private room which means you are in a room by yourself. So, when I was in the hospital, I was in what's called semi-private. I was in a room with one other person. Um when I was younger, my dad was in the hospital once and he was in a ward. He was in a room with three other people. Um so, we call these all hospital rooms. Oh, uh what hospital room is he in? Oh, he's in room uh 211. Uh it's a ward. There's four people in there or he's in room 212 which is a private room. But all of these would be called hospital rooms. And then we of course have the maternity ward which is the area of the hospital where babies arrive. (laughs) I'm not going to explain how this all works but if you are expecting a baby, maybe you have a scheduled C-section where they're going to do surgery to remove the baby or maybe you're going to have a natural birth Either way, you would go to the hospital and they would bring you to the maternity ward where they have rooms where women can give birth and then they have rooms where women can stay for a day or two after they give birth depending on how much care they need Um, and of course, the baby as well. So, that is called the maternity ward. Uh, Every one of our kids was born in a hospital in a maternity ward and then I would go and I was at all of the births It's a great experience Uh, and then I could visit Jen in the maternity ward and see the newly arrived baby. And then, of course, hospitals have a lot of wheelchairs or if you have problems walking, you might have a wheelchair at home. A wheelchair is simply a chair, a place to sit that has wheels so that you can move yourself around easily without walking or someone can push you, okay? Um so, wheelchairs are pretty common sites at hospitals. In fact, if you go to the emergency room, they might even make you sit in a wheelchair when they bring you to other parts of the hospital. Even if you don't have sore legs, like maybe you're out of breath or you just feel really weak, they might say, okay, uh sit in this wheelchair. We will bring you to um an observation room and we will have a look at you. 